Uh, yeah, Coach, um, the uh, attentional grounding call right before the half, how did that affect the game? Like you were, uh, had a word with officials there. Uh, you know, obviously, I'm not going to comment uh, my opinion, subjective opinion on the officiating. Uh, situationally, there, you know, trying to get make sure that when they do assess the penalty, uh, there's a lot of things that happen, right? We had a timeout left, uh, the runoff, still had the timeout, uh, a lot of communication. Um, so, again, I, without going more into it, because I don't want to get fined. I'm not sure what I'm allowed to say, and I'm not trying to be critical here, but there's a lot of communication that needs to happen in that situation. Um, you know, we're right there in the one. We'll look at everything, d uh, We can be better. You got to give Baltimore credit. So there's a lot of things going on right there. He said he thought when he rolled up, rolled out, uh, that he didn't maintain possession. So I got to look at it again. We felt pretty confident uh, through the flag, but obviously uh, they got to look at it and, and go through their whole procedure. But that's, that was a call on the field. So. It seemed like you were more heated than I can remember the last two years towards officiating. Why, why not? Because I'd rather give that money to people that need it in Atlanta than to give it to the league office and whatever they do with it. That's why, Michael. I'd rather, if they're going to find me a lot of money, I'd rather give it to people that need it. Uh, item two under the intentional grounding rule states um, the passer uh, initiates his passing motion toward an eligible receiver that is significantly affected by physical contact. Was there contact? Did y'all see contact? It looked like contact. Um, I think you kind of answered your question, own question there. Did y'all see contact? Yeah, I'm just not gonna get into the subjectivity of the officiating. It's kind of big because it made it a one-score game if you get the touchdown there. There was a couple of situations where we can be better, and that's what we'll look to do. Um, I thought Desmond played, you know, he took another step uh, against, you know, pretty good defense. But at the end of the day, we didn't win situational football. Baltimore did, and that's why they walked away with the one right there. So we got to look at everything we're doing so we can make improvements. Um, we got to be better situationally. Can you talk about Desmond taking a step and just what area did you see that step? Well, yeah, I think you saw a lot of the stuff as, you know, playing quarterback in the drop back game. I thought his decision making was, was good. He was pretty accurate. I don't have the numbers in front of me. I thought he made some big time throws. When the game got, the pressure got on in that second half, that's what you want to see. He's got a calm, he's collected. And I thought he delivered the football. Um, there's a couple things here, there that, uh, we got to look at, you know, down there on the red zone, um, short yardage, things like that. But I thought from a pocket presence against a uh, quality defense that give you a lot of looks, I thought he had a pretty good poise. It seems like his connection with Drake has been for the last three weeks has been pretty strong. Is that something I know he did a lot of reps, you know, before a couple weeks ago in practice, but was that something you could see even then? Work. Yeah, I mean, you, you could see it. Um, I think they've got pretty good chemistry. That's pretty obvious after two starts by him. And credit to Drake, too. I mean, there's other guys that are working, getting open, and uh, there's a trust factor there. I mean, obviously, I'd have to look at the film, too. But um, I mean, that was a big catch, the one going down into the red zone. You know, went up there and, and got it top shelf. I mean, that's where I think you can see a little bit of that basketball background. Going up there and getting it and what you need. Now we got to be better. I mean, we got to continue to work on the ball security. And uh, like I said, Mike, uh, situational football, that's where that's where we came up short today. Coach, seven losses uh, by fewer than 10 points this year. How do you look at that? Is we're close or we, there's, we still have something to do to get? Yeah, I mean, ultimately it's about winning. Uh, I think there's, but you can look at a lot of the progress being made. You know, we got to do. We got to find ways to play with a lead. A lot of these have been comebacks. Our guys are they are a resilient group, but we need to win. And we uh, well, thankfully we have another opportunity next week at home. And uh, but there's been a ton of progress. You know, different than last year. We were in some one-score games. Completely different team. Different situations. Going back and looking at them. Uh, but we got to find a way to get over that hump.
how do you kind of evaluate that in the grand scheme of where that unit is? Well, they're doing a nice job in critical downs. Uh, you know, four-point swings in the red zone gives us a chance to come back. It's just, you know, when we're, we're starting now, we, we've got to – Got to find a way. I mean, that's what we'll work and do everything we can. And that's our job. Find solutions and get off to a better start. You know, look at what happened. I thought we'd been decent situationally, but obviously today we weren't. And it's credit to Baltimore and find solutions there. Get ahead. But the defense, you know, the stats are what they are. But it, those critical four-point swings, if they do get down there, that they're winning a lot of those. And uh, so there, there are positives there. We, we, get, we got to do a better job. We need to. Need to score more when we get down there. You replaced uh, Darren Hall with Cornell Armstrong for the second third play of the game. And some of those were packages and, and you know, rolling guys. I mean, it was going to be a run-heavy game. We knew that. So certain things we were doing with the corners that we wanted a bigger body in there. Uh, didn't think there was going to be a lot of, as much coverage, but that was just kind of the plan, rolling guys at, uh, at that spot. You know, no different than some of the stuff we'd done at backer or inside linebacker. And, uh, that was why. Well, again, it goes with the game plan, Michael. I mean, you're trying to make sure you, when you're playing a team, they're heavy-handed. They run a lot of gap schemes, zone read. Uh, sometimes you want to go with some bigger bodies in there and, and stop the run. Anything else? You all were officially eliminated from the playoffs today. Uh, what, um, you know, what were you all trying to accomplish in the final two games? Of when? Progress and when, D-Led. We need to win, and we need to make progress. And uh, we're going to stop coming up here and sounding like a broken record about getting over the hump. So that's our charge. We need to win at home, win for our fans, and then finish this thing out right.